Hi, it's Elaine at the Sewing Basket. Today we're going to talk about mitered corners. We're going to start by marking our project and going on from there. I like to use the Seams Right tool. It's a Nancy Zeman product. It has all different measurements around each corner. And I'm going to be using the quarter inch. I want to mark a quarter inch in on all four corners. So I'm going to just line this up. Put a dot in each location and I'm lining up this green line and that edge. And the same thing here. And the same thing in this corner. So you'll end up with, no matter how big your project is, a quarter inch in on all four corners. This can be the size of a quilt. I just used a small piece here to show you the marking. Once my block is marked, I've got my corners marked on all four. I'm going to take my border piece and I'm going to lay it right underneath. I've already got this piece sewn on and I want the ends to extend by more than the width of my strip. So this is a one and a half inch strip. I've got at least three inches out each side. Those will form my miters. I'm going to sew the strip on. I'm going to start at the dot, do a lock stitch, three stitches in place, stitch at a quarter inch. So this is not all the way to the end. It's a quarter inch in, sew all the way across, and stop at that quarter inch point. Again, not sewn all the way to the end. I'm going to connect one border on the top and one border on the bottom, and then I'm going to press them out. I have my block with my two borders on each side pressed out. Again, stops a quarter inch from the top, from each corner. Then I'm going to take my next strip, and I like to work from the back so I can see my dots, obviously. And I'm going to lay this piece down and put this one on top and line up this edge, again, leaving a tail at each side. And I'm going to pin across the top. And I would use a few more pins than this, but I don't want to waste a lot of your time. And pin. And then I am going to sew from, pull this out of the way so nothing is stitched over. I've got my corner. You can see my quarter inch. I'm lining that up. I'm going to start sewing at the dot all the way across and I'm going to stop at the dot on this side. When I go to sew my pieces together, this is my first border that was attached, just sewn to here. Now I'm sewing my next border on. This is lined up along this edge, again with a tail at each side. I'm starting right at the dot, and I'm going to line that up, and just see where that, yeah, I want that needle to drop right into the blue dot that I marked. I'm going to do a lock stitch, three stitches in place, and then I'm going to stitch my quarter inch seam. And I'm going to go all the way across, and I'm going to stop at this end again right on that blue dot and I'm going to do a lock stitch right there so that these are not connected but they start and stop right at those blue dots. Once that's sewn it's going to look like this. You have your two tails coming out and they're both sewn up to that dot This one is sewn to here, 
and this one is sewn to there. So I've got that quarter inch in there. Okay. And then I'm going to press this open. Once my four borders are attached, I need a marking tool that I can see on my fabric and a small ruler that has a diagonal line through it. So I'm ready to go. And you do the same thing on all four corners. This gets folded diagonally. I'm lining up this, the two borders with each other, and I'm laying these extending flaps out straight. And I want to be sure that they're lined up nice and even. And what we're going to do is draw a line extending this angle out into the seam allowance. I'm going to take a pin, I've got them nice and lined up, and just pin those so they don't slip. Take my ruler, I have my diagonal line here. I'm going to line that up with the outer edge of my strip. So my diagonal line is lined here, and this edge of the ruler is along the curve, or excuse me, the fold of the fabric. So I'm going to line it up, get it nice and straight, and I'm looking again at the diagonal line through the ruler right along the edge of my fabric, and the top of my ruler along the fold of the fabric. That looks nice and straight, and I'm going to draw that line. And that, I'll put one more pin in on this side. I'll hold it up so you can see it. So this is now my stitch line. I'm going to start right at this point and stitch across and do a lock stitch. And when I open that up, that's going to be my miter. So I'm at the sewing machine. I switched to an open toe embroidery foot um, stitch with your regular foot. I put this on so you can see where I'm dropping the needle. I wanted you to be able to get a real clear view of that. So here we are with our line marked right across here. And this is my stitch point. When I go to stitch, I want to fold these seam allowances up and that spot in there is what I want to connect to. So I'm going to fold them up this way. And I want to start my stitching right where this stitching ends. So I'm going to line up right there where I can see that stitch. And I'm going to plant my needle. And I'm going to stitch along this blue line. So down and do a lock stitch. So that stitch is starting exactly where the stitch in here stopped. And I'm going to go across, stitch, do a lock stitch at the end. And again, you're going to sew that with a regular foot, not the open toe embroidery foot. When I open this up, there is my stitch point. And I'm going to trim this off to a quarter inch seam allowance, approximately. And then I'm going to go over to the ironing board and give it a press. The final thing to check is to make sure that your corners are square. When you do that angle, sometimes you can be off by just a little bit. So what I'm going to do is take my ruler. I've got my dotted line here that I can line up on my stitching. And I'm going to go out to the corner. And I'm an inch and about an eighth away from each one. I'm lining up my outer edge here and here. And you can see I'm off by just the littlest bit, but that will throw my corners off. So I'm going to just clean that up. It's just a tiny bit, but it's going to make that corner 
nice and square. You can actually see it if I lay it up to the lines on the mat as well. You get a nice square corner. So do that on all four corners. Once your corners are squared up, you're ready to go. Either add your binding or another border or cornerstones, whatever you choose. Thanks. Hope you enjoyed this video.